Hey everyone, what's going on? Thanks for tuning in to Relevant Jukebox, and today I'm back with another episode of The Gauntlet, where I go over a series of records that I didn't touch upon in a full-length review, but I still wanted to shout out to you guys. And I did take a little bit of time off, so I do have some records here that I did want to catch up on, some that I liked, some that I didn't. Also, feel free to drop some suggestions down below in the comment section of anything that I might have missed. And yeah, I won't waste any more of your time. Let's hop right into this series of albums. Starting off with Pink Sifu's Gumbo. Now, Pink Sifu's an experience experimental hip-hop artist that's been lurking in the underground for a little while now. He's got a few projects under his belt at this point, but you know, none of them really like stuck with me super hard. And I've been kind of just waiting for there to be a project that he would release that would be more of like a good representation of his sound. And you know, I think Gumbo is that project. Um, it is a gumbo of sorts of all of his different influences coming together. But you know, the production on here is pretty varied, pretty experimental, uh, pretty cool and eclectic sounding. And like there are times where I'm reminded of like Pierre Born a little bit on some of these looped tracks, but mix that with some like more avant-garde experimental stone's throw type artists. So if you've been listening to like JPEG Mafia, Koreatown Oddity, Quelle Chris, Milo, like all that kind of stuff in a blender, I think you'd dig this record. And yeah, I really think you should give it a shot. I think it's one of the better experimental hip hop projects so far of 2021. Latest project from Death Heaven over here, Infinite Granite, is just one I did not see coming whatsoever. I mean, they kind of pivoted and took a turn for the most boring representation of like post rock that I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, I just, I really just just scratch my head wondering like what they were thinking on this album. Um, I mean, it is just uninteresting in just about every way. And yeah, I don't know. I was never really a big Def Heaven fan to begin with, but uh, yeah, this offering right here doesn't really change my mind in any way. The indie rock band Lump, which consists of Laura Marling and Mike Lindsay, have another album out titled Animal. And you know, this album was pretty decent. I did enjoy it. It's a nice, you know, little sort of quirky and odd eclectic indie rock release over here. There's some pretty standout melodies on some of the singles that dropped, um, but the rest of the album just reads to me as a little too, like, indirect and nondescript. I did really enjoy the last track, uh, right up until Lara starts listing off the album credits, though. I thought it was kind of weird. I know they tied up the last Lump album like that, but it just kind of feels, like, showy. I don't know, it didn't really do it for me. The hardcore band Turnstile has a new album out here that's been getting a lot of buzz and praise across the internet. And on the one hand, I do appreciate that they are trying something different with this uh, sound. Uh, if, if anything, they're bringing in influences from like 90s alternative rock, like Third Eye Blind or something. Yeah, I mean like the first track on this album really hits like Third Eye Blind trying to do some kind of like DC hardcore or something. And it just does not go over that interesting in my opinion. I mean, it kind of sounds awkward. I mean, the vocals on this project are just like a little too in your face for some of the melodies in my opinion. And then they bring in some really left field influences that just kind of sound like they're trying to do too much in my opinion. I mean, this genre is pretty much dead at this point. Latest album here from singer-songwriter Indigo D'Souza is one that I feel like I've listened to before already. I guess it's okay, but I mean, it just plays out so over the top melodramatic. I mean, some of the lyrics on this thing just really like are a turn off in my opinion, especially when it's given a bad backdrop of like a gumbo soup of indie influences that you know come from the same camp of your like Phoebe Bridgers, Claro, Snail Mail, Soccer Mommy type camp. Yeah, I don't know. Just wasn't really one that like stuck the nail in the head for me. Singer Lola has a new album out, Stand For Myself, and it's one that really caught me off guard. I'm kind of brand new to Lola overall. And this album is just like a really, really enjoyable like vintage soul and R&B blend. Maybe add in just like a tad of disco in there as well. But the production on here isn't necessarily gonna like, you know, blow your mind, but it's really uh, Lola's vocal performances that sold me on here. I mean, they're just absolutely fantastic. I got a lot of enjoyment out of this album. I highly suggest listening to it. Maybe even if you like that Jesse Ware record from last year, I think you're going to dig this one. The prolific songwriter Ty Seagal has another album out here titled Harmonizer, and he's leaning more into like his psychedelic and prog rock influences on this one in sort of an indulgent way, honestly. Um, there wasn't really much about this album that stuck out to me. I mean, it's okay. It's decent, but it's not really like one of the more memorable or hard-hitting Ty Seagal records. Um, it's kind of, you know, lacking a lot of those, like, sweet choruses and hooks that sometimes he brings out. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it just kind of sounds like, you know, your Zappa-esque worship going on over here. Lady Gaga has seen fit to release a remix album of her last release, Chromatica, and... 
Can we all just admit at this point by now that this should have just been Chromatica? Or maybe for at least me to enjoy it, because I actually did enjoy this remix album over here. And Lady Gaga has always been, you know, kind of on the fringes of pop, and it's kind of surprising that she hasn't taken a plunge down this far of a rabbit hole on one of her own solo efforts. But she does still have a nice pulse on the industry as she's recruited all the titans of hyper pop at this point. You got Charlie XCX on here, Dorian, Electra, AG Cook, you have Arca, Rina Sawayama, and Claire. Clarence Clarity also show up on a track, but um, you know, where was uh, 100 Gex? But still, actually, this is an enjoyable remix album. Not every track hits super hard, but the ones that do uh, kind of make me forget, you know, what the original ones sounded like, which I think good remixes do. And they also still celebrate some of the really strong hooks that showed up on Chromatica, which again, if you're, you know, looking for a more experimental avant detour, this is for you <laughs> and me as well, because I just can't really get over like the Good Morning America vibes that I get from Chromatica. Chromatica. Latest offering from The Bug, the album's titled Fire. Uh, it is not fire though. Aesthetically, I do like what The Bug brings to the table. It's kind of like this industrial based, like doomy apocalyptic hip hop kind of vibe. But this release is just so one dimensional front to back. I mean, every track is basically the exact same thing. I mean, I couldn't really even sit through the whole thing. And tying up this gauntlet, there is a new album out from Ka. This one's titled A Martyr's Reward. And you know, Ka is definitely one of the more psychedelic acts in hip-hop nowadays, in my opinion. No matter what project he has his hand in, I always get these extreme visions of like this psychedelic hippie drug den in a film noir. And this new album over here is another offering of those psychedelic looped beats with his very cold and calculated delivery and extremely heady wordplay and storytelling as well. Um, it's another decent Ka album. I wouldn't say it's my favorite Ka album. It's kind of just another Ka album. I mean, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about if you listen to him up until this point, but I wouldn't really expect this one to turn over a new leaf with a bunch of new fans. And I kind of really don't know what I would even want Ka to do at this point. Maybe collaborate with somebody, you know, maybe switch it up a little bit, maybe try something a little different. I don't know. He doesn't really step outside of his comfort zone too often. Um, but I mean, I guess it hasn't yielded shitty results at this point, but, um, we're getting to that point where we might need to mix it up a little bit, in my opinion. So yeah, that's going to do it for this September edition of The Gauntlet. I hope you enjoyed it and got some good suggestions out of it. I will be back revisiting the vinyl series very soon, so stay tuned for that. Um, and yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, you're the real ones if you stuck around this long. Make sure to hit that like button if you liked it and share to your friends. And if you want more content from me, hit that subscribe button. Peace.